Hi, my name is Renee and I'm a bike specialist here at Pro Gear Bicycles. Today we will be assembling the Pro Gear Vantage mountain bike. However, these tips can be applied to all the mountain bikes found on our website. Let's crack into it. As you can see, the bike comes out of the box 80% assembled. Here are the tools you'll need to assemble your Pro Gear mountain bike. One Phillips head screwdriver, one 50 mil spanner, one five mil Allen key, one four mil Allen key, one floor bicycle pump, and some grease. For ease of assembly, we will be using a bicycle work stand. However, if there's not one available, all assembly steps can be done on the ground. Now before installing our front wheel, we will need to remove the protective cap from the hub to put the skewer through the hub. Ensure the springs are small side in as these help to center the wheel. Before trying to install into the fork, we also need to make sure the skewer is loose to allow for easy install. When installing the front wheel, we need to ensure that the brake disc is on the same side as the caliper. When in the fork, tighten the end nut, then push lever up until tightened. A good way to tell when the skewer is correctly tightened is it should feel loose until about halfway closed before you will feel tension. Before installing the handlebar, we need to ensure that the fork is facing in the right direction. The way we do that is by making sure that the caliper is on the left-hand side of the fork, like so. Once the forks are in the correct direction, we need to use a 4mm Allen key and remove the head stem bolts and the faceplate. We need to check that our cables are not twisted before installing the handlebars into the stem. Before installing the seat post to the frame, we will start by adding some grease into the seat tube to ensure that the seat post does not seize over time. Start by sliding the seat post into the seat tube, ensuring that you go past the minimum insertion line. You want to ensure that your saddle is level, neither tilting backward or forward. You can make little micro adjustments by using these two bolts. Uh, loosening off the front bolt and tightening the back bolt will make the saddle tilt backwards, while loosening off the rear bolt and tightening the front bolt will make the saddle move forward. We will start by adjusting the two caliper mount bolts while squeezing the front brake lever. First, we will start by adjusting the caliper mount bolts while holding on to the brake lever. Then tightening them should help center your brake caliper over the rotor. Any small minor adjustments can be made by gently loosening the bolts and moving the caliper by hand into position. You can look down the disc to see where the caliper may be grazing the disc and adjust. To start our pedal install, we first need to identify the left and right pedal marked L and R. Start by applying grease to the pedal thread 
and screwing the right pedal clockwise into the right crank. The easy way to tell is to twist the pedal towards the front of the bike to tighten. We can repeat the process and screw on the left pedal into the left crank. The left pedal is tightened in a counterclockwise direction, again tightening towards the front of the bike. Once finger tight, we can use a 15 mil spanner to tighten both pedals. When inflating your tire, it is important to first locate the recommended tire pressure stamped on the sidewall of your tire. Once we locate the recommended pressure, we can proceed to inflate to a pressure within the marked range. The higher the pressure, the faster the tire will roll. However, the ride will be less forgiving than a pressure on the lower end of the marked range. Once inflated, check the bead line and ensure it is even around the entirety of the tire. Next step will be to adjust the rear derailleur. We will be doing this on a work stand. However, it can be done on the ground if a work stand is not available. First, we'll start by rotating the cranks and shifting down into our smallest cog. Now we will try shifting up the cassette and seeing if it's nice and smooth. Now, if you're having any issues shifting up the cassette, that means that there's too much slack in the cable and you need to add some tension by turning the barrel adjuster. And now we will try shifting down the cassette. And adversely, if you are trying to shift down the cassette and you're having a hard time, that means that there is too much tension in the cable and you need to add some slack by turning the barrel adjuster. Next, we will be adjusting the front derailleur using a Phillips head screwdriver. Now the gears you want to be in is the large chain ring and the small rear cog while making adjustment. So now we will pedal and make sure that the chain is not rubbing on either side of the front derailleur. And it looks like it is rubbing a little bit. So I'll get my high limit screw and adjust accordingly. That seems to be good. Now what we want to do is go down into our smallest chain ring and our largest rear cog. And again, we will check to see if there's any rub. And if there is, you will be adjusting the lower limit screw until you hear no rubbing. For our final adjustments, we want to ensure that our head stem is in line with our front wheel using a 4 mil Allen key. Once you have it aligned, tighten your stem bolts. Next, we will rotate our handlebars, ensuring that they are centered with the stem. Once we get the position we're happy with, we will tighten our faceplate bolts. So there you have it, you've assembled your Pro Gear mountain bike. Now get out there and ride.